Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa is considering various grid-related funding proposals and delivery mechanisms. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss what this could mean for adding much-needed electricity supply. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. How acute is South Africa's grid shortfall and what does it mean for the electricity crisis? Well, it depends which region you look at in South Africa as to how acute it is. So in certain provinces, the physical infrastructure in the Western Cape, the Northern Cape and the Eastern Cape is very constrained at the moment. It's fully absorbed in certain areas. And we know those are the most promising from a renewable energy perspective, both wind and solar. So those provinces, definitely it's acute. And we've already seen that play out in the, the six bid window of the renewables program where no wind projects were procured or moved to a procured better status because they said basically there's, there's no capacity available. Because in the intervening period when the bids were submitted, because we've changed the, uh, the allowing private uh, operators to come on without getting, say, a public procurement and going through a power purchase agreement with a, a private off-taker that was absorbed during that. The capacity that was there for the, the wind projects initially was absorbed. Whether those projects have actually materialised is another debate and that's why we've seen uh, Eskom changing its grid access rules recently which went to court but now we've subsequently had a settlement and an agreement around a softening of those, uh, those grid access rules. Still first uh, ready, first served rather than first come, first served at a different uh, sort of, uh, there's different uh, thresholds, uh, very, very strict thresholds, say around wind measurements for two years, which even banks weren't asking for, Eskom was asking for, and that was going to be a, sort of a, a real problem. And there are a number of other things that, that have been changed around that, and so that we've seen a settlement about that. But if you look in other regions <coughs> around the country, there it's far less acute. Um, so. Pumalanga, where we know the most of the coal capacity comes from, still has capacity, Free State still has capacity, Northwest, Gauteng, but these aren't necessarily the best renewables acreages. But as we hear from the system operator, the, the portfolio effect you get by diversifying your electricity supply, especially renewables supply sources. So if you just have wind in the Cape provinces, it becomes problematic because of the way uh, our cold fronts come through the country. So you get this tremendous uh, boost in your wind generation capacity as the cold front hits the Cape provinces. But as it comes over, you get less wind. And that's when the cold front hits Gauteng, which is the biggest demand center in the country. And then you have this peak in demand and there's no wind coming through. So diversifying where you have, for instance, your wind uh, generators is also very useful. So I think what is emerging is that there's also going to be a desire to uh, turn virtue out of necessity and try and get uh, some of this wind and solar capacity in other parts of the country where the resource, the solar re radiation, the wind resource might not be the best. But from a system perspective, it's actually very beneficial to have it diversified. So by having this lack of grid in certain parts of the country, we could see uh, wind projects in particular going elsewhere and that would be good for the system. What immediate options are there to unlock capacity? Well the immediate one we need to see the, the, the latest grid assessment report from Eskom which is nearly finalized. We should any day in our seas, uh, have visibility of where they say the remaining capacity is and that will be important for people that are wanting to bid into the next procurement rounds, we know that uh, bid window 7 is going to start soon, bid window 8 is scheduled for early next year. So that having that visibility of what is definitely available, I think is a first important step. The second one is a lot of thoughts going into this issue of curtailment. And curtailment is used all over the world by grid operators, trans transmission system operators, uh, very effectively where there are, th where this, this mismatch exists between needing to roll out grid, which takes a long time, and wanting to integrate renewables uh, like solar and wind, which take quite short, relatively short, to prepare a project and to build it. So curtailment, which is basically saying that you're going to, at certain times when there's congestion on the grid, not accept 
uh, electricity being produced from the solar farm or the wind farm. Uh, and basically, there's a, it's an, an economic cost because basically it's electricity that gets wasted. And the issue now will be contractually how you deal with that cost. So you almost overbuild at certain grid connection points and accept uh, that there's going to be certain periods where you can't uh, use that electricity. But then what it does is it accelerates uh, your ability to bring in renewables, that uh, you unlock much more grid capacity immediately. And the cost uh, of it uh, is offset by the way you will, you know, at the moment our only option is to use diesel generators. This means that you'll have more cheap renewables coming into the system than you would otherwise have had and displacing, for instance, that diesel for most days. So there's an economic benefit net-net, but there will be days or periods uh, where you'll have to curtail and that energy is wasted and there is an economic cost to that. And uh, the view is that if we do that uh, sort of at a 10% level, except say 10% curtailment in the Western Cape, you'll double the capacity immediately uh, to add renewables onto the grid. And uh, that's basically that gives you four gigawatts additional capacity. Now, if we had done that for bid window six, those projects, shovels would already be in the ground and we'd already be coming close, I suppose, towards the end of this year or maybe middle of next year to getting that much needed generation capacity. So I think that's a quick win and something, obviously there's a cost, but there's huge benefits of bringing in this renewable cheap electrons yeah, sooner rather than later for South Africa. So I think those two things, having visibility of where the physical uh, assets on the grid are there, ready to accept more electrons, and then accepting a level of curtailment. South Africa has also received funding offers and is considering new delivery mechanisms. Yes, you know, South Africa, ESKIM has put out diligently the, every year the transmission development plan. And we know there's a, uh, there's a big uh, need to build new power lines, new transformers, and to do this as quickly as possible. And we know part of the problem of these delays to Madupi and Kasile and Ngula is that all the money, or a lot of the money, is being directed to the generation division. And uh, there's been an underinvestment in the grid. So we basically need to spend upwards of 230 billion rand to just meet the transmission development goals. And a lot of that is about integrating new renewables into the grid in these areas which have traditionally not been where we have generation. We've traditionally had it up in Mpumalanga. It's going to be more uh, in the south west of the country that we need this grid. So we, it's a massive investment program and we have to do it at a pace <coughs> that we've never really achieved in the past. That we really have to upscale our annual build out of both power lines and transformers. I think the, the phasing is that there's going to be a lot more focus initially on the transformation capacity and also using battery storage in certain parts of the province, uh, country, especially the Northern Cape, to immediately unlock with the power lines you have because it takes long time to get these power line servitudes. But ultimately, uh, there's a view that maybe Eskom's balance sheet is not sufficient to do it at the sort of scale that we're talking about. And also Eskom's internal capacity is probably not sufficient skills-wise. Um, even though they don't actually build it, that's done on an EPC basis now, there's still going to be capacity constraints to get the tenders through, to get the, the, all the projects in the ground. So there's a view that maybe different de delivery mechanisms are needed. These would be in the form of public-private partnerships. Ultimately, this grid is a natural monopoly, so there's a view that this should remain state-owned. There could be a build, operate and transfer type arrangement for a period so that the other private sector to get this thing uh, into the ground as quickly as possible, earn some returns on that and then transfer it back to the utility. But we haven't got there yet. And the electricity minister has also been applying his mind to it. Operation Vullendleda, or NECOM now, is, uh, has been applying their mind to it for some time. And I think there's also offers from the new development bank of the BRICS group, as well as you know, through the Just en on Energy on Transition Partnership, there is uh, finance, concessional finance available, mostly in the form of concessional loans, not too many grants, which is a, a sore point, but be that as it may, there's money that's cheaper than would be available on the market to build the grid. 
and it's now about South Africa making those decisions. And we hear that there's going to be a conference co-hosted between government and the JSE to look at this and to have a dialogue on this, and then I suppose move in some sort of direction. We also know that the, uh, it's happening while Eskom is unbundling its transmission company, so it will really be under the aegis of the uh, National Transmission Company of South Africa, or South, of South Africa uh, when that gets formed. But um, I think Eskom has to see what is available, what the different delivery mechanisms. I think there's an openness, but there's also a nervousness. So I think that conference will be important to just air all the issues so that we know what, what they are and also to understand what funding might be available and what offers are available from the private sector. But I think it's just the pace and scale is just probably just too much for the National Transmission Company South Africa to do by itself uh, if we're going to be rolling out at the sort of level that we need to do so that there aren't these, this grid, isn't this gridlock in the system on this con constraint and that we can start getting more, much needed generation capacity into the system. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.